The Catholic community of Sacred Heart welcomes you to this celebration of Holy Family Sunday. You are certainly our family, and so we are most pleased to celebrate this feast of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and the peace of God our Father, the great love, the wisdom, and joy of Jesus our Christ, and the fellowship of their Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. How good it is to be with you on the feast of the Holy Family, following right after Christmas. It kind of t ties everything together in a way. So happy you're with us. We prepare ourselves to enter this feast most joyfully by taking a big, deep spiritual breath in. And we let go now and make room for God by dropping everything, our inner clutter, our worries, concerns, the busyness of the season. And we take that second breath in. And on the out-breath, we welcome a moment of interior silence. This silence helps usher us into the contemplative dimension of our faith. We take that third deep breath in. And on the out-breath, we sink as deeply as we can into the center of our hearts. From that place, we cry out tenderly to God to touch us in the place we need God's help the most. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 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 you 
Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of your house delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, he is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father will bring comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father even when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten, firmly planted against the debt of your sins. A house raised in justice for you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Blessed are they, blessed are they who dwell in your house. Dwell in your house, content. 
continually they praise you happy the man whose strength you are their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage blessed are they blessed are they who dwell in your house A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these things, put on love. That is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to the festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances, but not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking questions, and all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers." When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But if they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, my dear friends, it is the celebrated feast of the Holy Family. And I particularly love this feast because we look at the family, the real family, the nuclear family of Jesus, and we find there so many elements that are really like 
hours. Think of this. We deal with a questionable pregnancy. We deal with uh, heartbreak with Joseph. He doesn't know what to think. Then he has a, the revelation in a dream that Mary's conceived by the Holy Spirit. Wow, can you imagine having to wrap your mind around that? They say, have no fear of taking Mary as your wife. So, okay. So then think of the difficulty of the birth while they're doing the census. Imagine. And then all the manifestations come about this child the visit of the shepherds, the visit of the kings, that he is the Messiah. And then there's a bounty put on the head of the child, and now they're refugees. Imagine, the place that God freed the slaves from, Egypt, becomes their place of refuge. How many faces of refugees have we seen in the news? Fleeing, oppressive countries where lives are in danger. Mary and Joseph's face would have looked very much like that going to Egypt. And now even today, we know we, Jesus is coming up in years, he's now 12. Remember when your kids were adolescents? Remember when you were 12? Maybe you're 12 right now watching. But a 12-year-old adolescent Imagine this scenario. So Mary and Joseph are in Jerusalem. It's a three-day trek going from Nazareth up to Jerusalem because you're going up a mountain to celebrate this feast. Then they come down to go home. Three-day trip. Now, traveling in caravans was a safe way to go because you had all the supplies you need, you shared food, you shared bedding, you shared all of the necessities, and safety in numbers. So all of the women folk would travel ahead with their young children mm, several hours, maybe even a day ahead, where the men with their older boys and children would travel behind them. So, Joseph is thinking, oh, where's Jesus? Well, he's with his mother and her caravan. And Mary's thinking, oh, Jesus is with Joseph. Of course he is. He's of age now. He travels with the men. I shouldn't be worried about him. But when they get together, Joseph, tell me you've got Jesus, right? Right? And he says, isn't he with you? And then begins the frantic search among their relatives and friends to find him in either caravan. And of course, he's not there. So now you're dealing with a missing child. How many of you at home can relate to that in your family? Missing in one way or the other. This time it's physically missing. And who knows that he's in mortal danger. They didn't know what to do. But of course, since no one had made it back home yet, they go back to Jerusalem, this big city, and begin the search. It takes them three days to track him down. And there he is in the temple. Imagine how mystified the parents are as many of you parents are when you have children, mystified by just exactly who is this child. You know, and it's very charming because he's obviously very precocious and very captivating because he has all of those scribes and people conversing with him and being amazed at his questions and amazed at his answers to their questions. Now, this thing about a missing 12-year-old, I am reminded of a haunting true story about a minister and his wife who had a 12-year-old who was always in trouble because he refused to pick up his room. Oh, they were 
so frustrated. They would try to get this kid to pick up his dirty laundry off the floor. Everything was always a mess in there. They bought him his own laundry basket and said, is it asking too much for you to put the clothes in the basket? And this became a scenario in their household. Christian parents, good Christian parents, at wit's end of what to do with their recalcitrant 12-year-old. Well, one day, and the father, the minister, told this story. That kid went out on an afternoon for a bike ride and didn't come home. He'd been killed, ran over. And the father of that boy said that he walked into his son's room and picked up those clothes where he could smell the son that he loved so much and how precious was every little detail of his messy room and messy life. How precious. And he told that story to his congregation soon after the death of his son. And his message was this. Your family will bring you the greatest love and the greatest joy you've ever known. And really, your family are the only ones who can break your heart. Great mystery there. It's kind of like the mother of God giving birth to the Savior of the world and being told, and a sword will pierce your heart, which, of course, Mary, no stranger to losing a spouse, no stranger to losing a child. So on the Feast of the Holy Family... I think about all of you at home who might think you're not quite holy enough. Maybe you're fighting with your 12-year-old, or maybe someone is lost, or maybe someone's not speaking to you right now, someone is estranged, But the message of the Feast of the Holy Family is God is so near to all of your joys and your sorrows in a family. He knows it. He lived it in the flesh. And he continues to come from that beautiful experience of divinized humanity to help us to live and to thrive in the midst of our all-too-flesh-and-blood family. Finally, family is precious. Really see him and really see her. Give them a hug and really Put yourself into it, a hundred percent. You will never regret a single moment of that affection. May you too experience the joy of a holy family in all of its wonderful dirt and dust and grime and trouble, which is always the soil of the new life to come. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And so do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth? I do. I do too. Do you believe in his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? I do. I do too. Do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead, that he ascended into heaven, that he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and to him alone belongs the divine right to judge anyone, the living and the dead? I do. I do do too. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. I do too. This is our faith, and we celebrate it with great joy on this feast of the Holy Family. In this season of Christmas, we thank our God for the gift of Jesus. Today, we open ourselves to God's word, teaching us how to live as children of God in families of love. For respect and acceptance in families, we pray for all members of our families. May parents and children respect and honor one another in their lives and for their gifts. May we care for our parents in times of need and love them as the Lord has loved us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For forgiveness and love in family life. All families are blessed, be God, for forgiveness, patience, and gentleness. May we be gentle in our families, especially at this time of Christmas, accepting one another as the Lord has accepted us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the strength to live by the gospel, the Holy Family journeyed to Egypt, persecuted by those who feared the good news. May we be strong in witnessing to the truth and resolute in living the message of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For an openness to God's purposes, Joseph received the news of God's purpose in a dream. May we be open to the prompting of the Spirit, ready to respond to the call of the gospel as faithful disciples of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, may the light of Christ lead them to eternal glory. For our loved ones, for the sick, the homebound, the military, law, law enforcement personnel, and all first responders, and most especially those for whom we have promised to pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God of the promises, we bring the needs of families before you. Bless our families and help us to be faithful to the teaching of your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will someday walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to me? This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will Come a storm with his hand. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels try? When you kiss your little baby, you have kissed the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you know?
Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect? This sleeping child you're holding is a great I am. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that, through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon our eyes, so that, as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible." And so with the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all those who serve you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us too, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis, St. Clare, St. Therese, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Together from our hearts we pray the beautiful prayer Jesus himself gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to the apostles, I leave you peace. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let's turn to our loved ones and offer a really heartfelt sign of our love, affection, and peace. And if by chance you are praying the Mass alone with me this day, let's enter a moment of silence and ask the Lord to spill the peace we experience throughout all the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that, you that you should enter under, under my roof, but only I say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. 
since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Shari must have been surprised Where this road had taken him Cause never in a million lives Would he have dreamed of Bethlehem And standing at the manger he saw with his own eyes a message from the angel come to life. Joseph said, why me? I'm just a simple man of trade. Why him with all the rulers in the Inside this stable filled with hay Why her, she's just an ordinary girl Now I'm not one to second guess What angels have to say This is such a strange way To say Jesus had come as he deserved There would have been no Bethlehem No lowly shepherds at his birth But Joseph knew the reason Love had to reach so far and as he held the Savior in his arms, he must have thought, why me? I'm just a simple man of trade. Why him with all the rulers in the world? Why him inside this stable? She's just an ordinary girl Now I'm not one to second guess What angels have to say This is such a strange way To say Such a strange way to save the world. Strange way. This is such a strange way. Ah. Such a strange way. Ooh. A strange way to save. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family 
so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, speaking of family, with all of our many viewers throughout the world, we feel like we're very much connected to you as an online family of Christians who really, really, really celebrate and love the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel that he has given us. Thank you, thank you, thank you when you hit that like button. That really helps us spread this message everywhere. Every time you hit it, it brings us forward to the YouTube audience throughout the world. And think about sharing. Hit the share button and maybe send this uh, telecast to someone that you think might benefit from the message that was offered today. And uh, finally... Thank you so much for all of you that donate generously to us. We, we hope only to break even in terms of the production costs of the Mass so that it doesn't burden the local church of Sacred Heart in Punta Gorda, Florida. Thank you for all of you who hit that donate button and help us out. So that said, dear friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and be gracious to you. May he reveal to you this day his tenderness, providence, and care for you, and all the days of your lives. May he at this moment touch you with the grace of his peace. The Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our celebration of the Eucharist is now finished. We go forth in peace and in joy to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And we'll see you next Sunday, everyone.